Pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium, and this may be the visceral and or parietal pericardium. It can be acute or chronic. It can be primary, in which case it is usually viral or secondary. And it may produce a pericardial effusion. The commonest causes of pericarditis are a viral infection, myocardial infarction and uremia. This is an example of acute pericarditis. To orientate you, the bottom of the picture is the surface of the heart and the top of the picture that has a red streaky appearance is a fibrinous exudate containing inflammatory cells. This is a typical example of the gross appearance of pericarditis. Clinical features of pericarditis include retrosternal chest pain, a low-grade fever, a pericardial friction rub, and if there is an effusion, this may result in diminished heart sounds, dullness to percussion and a raised JVP. If the pericarditis becomes constrictive, this can result in impaired cardiac function. The surface of the heart has a rough pale brown appearance and this is due to the fibrinous exudate. And because of this roughness, there is a friction rub. Viruses that cause pericarditis include Coxsackie A and B, herpes simplex and influenza. Bacterial pericarditis may be caused by direct spread from a focus of infection, for example, lobar pneumonia or infective endocarditis, empyema, etc. TB, fungi and parasites may also cause pericarditis. Here is an example of vegetations caused by bacterial endocarditis on the mitral valve, and this could spread into the pericardium, resulting in purulent pericarditis. Other causes include acute myocardial infarction, uremia, trauma, cardiac surgery, radiation and metastases to the pericardium. Here is an acute myocardial infarct and here is a heart containing a metastasis at the apex. Pericarditis may also have an immune-mediated cause, for example, rheumatic fever, SLE, drug hypersensitivity and scleroderma. Another cause of pericarditis following a myocardial infarct is Dresler's syndrome. This is an autoimmune reaction that occurs a few weeks or months after a myocardial infarct. Morphologically, Pericarditis may be subdivided into fibrinous or serofibrinous, that's the commonest type of pericarditis, serous, purulent, hemorrhagic or caseous. Serous pericarditis usually occurs with non-infectious causes such as uremia, rheumatic fever, SLE, etc. There is a fibrinous exudate and the effusion is usually 50 to 200 mils containing polymorph lymphocytes and macrophages. Fibrinous pericarditis is the commonest type and this follows a myocardial infarct, uremia, SLE and may occur as a result of Dresler's etc. Morphologically the pericardial surface is rough. This is another example of fibrinous pericarditis. Here the visceral and parietal pericardium have been separated to reveal a bread and butter type of appearance, hence the term bread and butter pericarditis. Purulent pericarditis, as the name suggests, occurs as a result of bacterial infections producing 4 to 500 mils of purulent fluid and this may extend into the mediastinum. Over time, purulent pericarditis usually organises, but this may cause a constrictive pericarditis. The two main complications of pericarditis are tamponade, where there is a large 
pericardial effusion or constrictive pericarditis. Both will cause impairment of cardiac function resulting in heart failure. Yeah.